Well, I actually grew up, that's always a difficult question. Where are you from? I was born in Virginia. Both my parents were in the Navy, but I moved to Texas when I was two. We lived in South Texas. We lived in Deep East Texas. We lived in Greenville. We lived in Garland. Uh, in 13 years of school, K, kindergarten through 12th, I went th through, uh, went to 13 different schools. Most of that was in the early years. I went to high school, the same high school, all four years, and, uh, and changed mostly during those elementary school years. Um, when I was in fifth grade, I got selected to be a safety patrol officer. It involved getting to go to a camp to learn traffic rules and how to safely escort kids through the intersections there in Nacogdoches. And I was a little bit, well not a little bit, I was a class clown and I was surprised, frankly, even at 10 years of age at my selection uh, for that honor. Um, but someone saw some potential in me despite my knuckleheadedness and decided to try to develop that and that was really a transformational uh, experience in my life. I am the district judge for the 8th Judicial District. Uh, Texas has about 400 different judicial districts. Now, like in Dallas County, the big county, sometimes they may have 20 or 30 judges in that one county. Whereas here, where we're, we're not so uh, high in population numbers, uh, my judicial district covers four counties, Hopkins County, which is where Sulphur Springs is, uh, and then uh, Franklin County, Delta County, and Raines County. So Mount Vernon, Cooper, and uh, Emory would be the cities that, and towns that people would recognize. And while I have jurisdiction to hear all manner of civil lawsuits, family law cases, uh, I do hear some family law cases, but the primary load I have are felony cases, which are major crimes. They're misdemeanor crimes. Those are, are not quite so serious. You might could go to jail whereas felony cases are uh, cases where if you're convicted you can go to prison for as little as six months all the way up to life in prison with no parole and sadly we even have a few cases where the ultimate punishment of death uh, could be assessed by a jury and if that's the case that would be the death penalty so we've got some real serious serious crimes that we deal with in our courts. You know, integrity tells us who you really are, uh, who you really are when no one's looking. It, it is how committed you are to the moral principles that you have um, and to the ethics, the rules of ethics that you have. Uh, integrity is an important word. You know, to help kids, we have young kids and older kids who will hear this, um, Integrity can also, it mean, it comes from the same word, and many of these kids in math, even in fifth grade, will begin to study integers, that is whole numbers, not fractions or with decimals, but whole numbers. And, and, and we get our word integrity from the, the root of that word, which means whole or complete. And, and engineers use that. Uh, when our kids go to Dallas and they're driving on those uh, those overpasses, and, and they're, they're sometimes scary and fun to go over. You go up high and the, and the, the bridge overpasses. Well, we don't think anything about that, but somebody with incredible uh, skill and knowledge, an engineer, needed to make sure that that bridge had integrity. It was structurally sound, whole and complete, so that we don't think anything about it when we drive over. If it's not, we're all in trouble. And that's the same thing. I deal with people on a day in and day out basis who have violated their very integrity. And they sometimes it's just a, a one-time a moral lapse that doesn't necessarily define them, or sometimes it tells us really who they are. It doesn't mean they can't change. There's always hope, always hope. But, but what I find is that when people uh, are, are lack integrity, they make horrible decisions that destroy themselves and others. You know, we deal with a lot of different kind of crimes, and sadly, while we have a lot of drug offenses, possession of methamphetamine, cocaine, heroin, I dealt with three cases yesterday dealing with possession, uh, delivery of uh, cocaine, or, or heroin, and methamphetamine. They destroy people's lives. Many of the crimes we have are related to that. 
most of the burglaries we have, whether it's breaking into someone's house and stealing stuff, breaking into a building and stealing things, whether it is um, forging somebody's name on a check, we have that, those kind of forger of financial instrument, we call that, uh, using someone's credit card or debit card uh, without their permission, almost always traces back to drugs. People who commit those kinds of offenses are doing that to get money for drugs. And there's where you see oftentimes people who had a moral lapse in judgment in using the drugs, and now all of a sudden what seemed like a fun thing to do now is completely taking over their life. Most of the people have the ability to change, want to change, need some help to change, and we do whatever we can to change. But inevitably, they have somehow veered off their moral, they, they've lost their moral compass, they've made horrible decisions, and sometimes they beat themselves up and think that's who they are. I, I frequently will tell them, what you've done doesn't have to define you. This can be a change in your life. I, if I put someone on probation, I tell them, the next thing I want to sign in your case is not a warrant for your arrest because you've messed your probation up. I want to sign a, an order releasing you from probation and releasing you earlier than what we're putting you on. If, we're, if I'm putting you on for five years, I hope I can let you off in three years because you've done so well that you've made it abundantly clear to everybody that uh, we have found the real you and you're on the right path. You know, um, I mentioned a moment ago that one of the things that uh, was transformational in my life was the selection by adults for me to take a leadership position uh, as a safety patrol officer. And that will seem like not a big deal. It was the world to me then. And that helped to, to guide and define me. I still had my knuckleheaded moments, by the way. I was still growing up and I had to be corrected and so forth. But if you, if you set patterns uh, and habits uh, now, then uh, those will become patterns and habits as an adult, good or bad. And so, you know, the age-old adage and the golden rule of treat others like you want to be treated um, applies now. And if you treat people the way you want to be treated, then you're going to act in such a way, whether people are looking or not, that... Um, gives evidence of your moral compass. You know, it's real simple things. It's so easy now to cheat, much easier than when I was a kid uh, you, because we have the internet and so forth. And it may not be that if you're in your room and you're doing some, some assignment and you can cheat, you might not, nobody's watching. Nobody, you know, nobody might know, but you'll know. And when you make that compromise in your moral compass, the little compromise now, you start down a slippery slope. And the kinds of decisions that I see adults uh, make in my court, uh, I, you, you can trace that back to poor decisions that they began to make as a young person. And it really set the direction for where they uh, ultimately landed in my court.